Um, for those of you who had been on the site for a while, this is a sequel to a program I presented on June 2nd. I called it two and a half modules. This is a sequel. And if you don't didn't like the original, you can sign off and I won't be embarrassed. <laughs> anyway, this is the development of the half module. Are you ready, uh, Rod? Okay, yeah. you're, you're, okay, there you go. Yeah, he's got it. Is, did you guys get share screen? Yeah, we can see it perfectly. Okay. This is the half module that was as presented in June. Um, it was in a very raw state. It had the track, it had the buildings, and it had a sand base on it. And there were, I called it the Y, um, with seven crossings, the seven crossings are not crossings of track, but crossings of streams in the area. For those who are new to my modeling and haven't been present, I am modeling Southwest Wisconsin. You can see the Wisconsin Illinois border in the lower right. You can see where Madison is. The town we're gonna to be talking about is Gratchet which is circled, Ron is circled there. The theme of my whole layout is it's in the, the Driftless area of Wisconsin. The Driftless area was missed by the glacier in the last realm. And so it's rolling hills with raw stone outcropping. Um, there are several railroads going through it. Um, the Chicago, Milwaukee and St. Paul, which was bought out by the Milwaukee Road. There's a um, Chicago Northwestern going west from Madison. There's a Mineral Point Northern, which Paul Larson of Model Railroader um, modeled. And then there's a Platteville and Calamine going from Platteville over to Calamine. I'm modeling all four of those short lines. Next. This is an aerial view of Gratchet. The depot was down in the valley and it was a crossing of the um, Chicago, Milwaukee and St. Paul. The town of Gratchet was up on a hillside above in the, where the X is in the dotted lines. You can see the shadow of the um, Y that is still present in the landscape. Next. The module or the display module I made for this one is actually a piece, a piece of my uh, layout. The, the piece is in the island portion, and that's the Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Paul. And the Chicago Northwestern is goes around the perimeter. And then Mineral Point Northern goes from the island, crosses the aisle, and goes connects into the Chicago Northwestern. And so there's an odd shape to this display. So that explains. Okay, next. The, luckily the Gratchet Depot still exists. Um, these photos were taken about 10 years ago. Um, it's been partially restored and kept in place. I added these photos to my display because um, part of the judging on this is conformity. And so if you have pictures of so something that your model relates to, it really enhances their consideration of your um, display. Next. So here you can see the depot and it's modeled. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of development from two months ago. All of the development on there, mostly it's been scenery. The other thing I got was from pictures of a um, Milwaukee Railroader magazine Ron provided to me. And what was unique is if you look at the water tower, I started with a Chicago Northwest, I mean, a Campbell kit, which is the top portion. But then I found out the bottom portion, instead of being an octagon, actually was a round um, 
configuration. In the background, as you can see, I added a stockyard. Okay, next. So here's the other side of the depot. Um, as a sense of humor and whatever, and also um, inspired by a guy named Bob Franconi, um, who does a monthly article in the NMRA magazine. He has loved those loads. For those of you who are NMRA members and subscribe to the magazine. And I thought I would try and mimic his work by having some Jordan fire engines. So um, one person said, well, nobody would have three fire engines delivered to a single little village. So like, and his pals piped up, well, have you never heard of LCL? Mm -hmm. And that was my intent, less than car load, one fire engine being delivered. So in the background, you can see that, um, Coaling station, this is based very much on the prototype. I thought four years ago, I was in the RPM conference in Collinsville and a person saw my modeling and saw where I was modeling. He says, well, I have a, the engineering drawings for the coaling tower in Gratchet. So he sent a copy to me and I had already started modeling this, but I found out the afterwards that the Gratchit station had all of the walkways and everything on the opposite side from what I'd modeled. So I had to tear it all off and start over. So a learning lesson. Next. Here you can see just a blow up of the um, fire engines. Um, I'm glad they did not grade the um, rolling stock because some of you may get a little sick. That's a Tyco car with a deck yeah. added, <laughs> KD um, couplers and KD trucks. You can see I also then modeled the utility lines. There's a combination of the power lines up above and then the telegraphy lines that was the communication system on this railroad in the 1920s, which is when I modeled. Next. This is a stockyard, the last module I did um, for the Indy 2022. I had the stockyard filled with livestock and they actually commented that the, um, on the grading that one, that the whole scene was way too busy. And so I decided I'd leave all the livestock out of the, um, stockyard. Um, what I did change, as you can see here, I scratch built a hand water pump, which I installed both here and here. I also then scratch built the ladder and I'll get into that in a little bit. But you can see down here, all of the crossings are virtually the same. They're just short girder bridges across limestone. Next. Uh, can I make a comment? Absolutely. Anybody can pitch in at any time. If you notice, this is where the uh, farmer brings his animals in. And then this is where they get out to the car. And this he's built a uh, ramp for a uh, double, uh, you know, two layered uh, stock car. And this would be the scale house. Okay, this is another view. Um, the focal point on this is the windmill. I'll talk about that a little bit more. I've scratch built about six windmills now, um, and I'll get into the detail in that. This one is a metal frame windmill. Next. Believe it or not, what was more popular than the um, display module was this little board that I constructed and put adjacent to the model. Because one of the sections in the grading is detail and describe difficulty. So how do you describe difficulty? So 
I decided to expand on that at the Indy competition and presentation. I had provided a written description of everything and I was watching people looking at the display and not a single person picked up the written description to look at it. So I decided I have to do something to get their interest. So I made this, which is a visual and it explains what was tough for me and the windmill fans just to give you an idea what scratch buildings like the outer ring is a 132nd inch square bent rod that i wrapped around us um, dowel soldered it all and ground it down the inner ring is a half inch diameter copper water pipe that i cut off and then ground that down to a 32nd inch thick the intersection that within that half inch core is all styrene strips and tube the fan blades are made out of styrene sh sh cut to shape. And the main challenge was placement and anchorage of the fan blades with even spacing and blade pitch and getting it all to glue and hold. The way I did the spacing is I actually used a wire from the inner ring to the outer ring that was seven inches long. And so it expanded way out and I could control the exact spacing and then I trimmed it off later. My next challenge was the windmill veins, and I'm still learning how to solder. I went to a soldering clinic at the National last week, and it was unfortunately all about, um, for me, soldering electrical wires. Um, in my building in the coaling tower, I had, when I first did it, I glued the um, phosphor bronze rails to the um, brass posts. Those are th also 32nd inch square posts. And I wasn't happy with them. So I bought the Proxon drill and drill press and I've learned how to drill 1 64th inch diameter holes through a 32nd inch square brass. Rod. It's very difficult to get that level of precision. The three things in the middle are the traces for the um, series. And then again, that is also soldered. Um, you can see samples I've made, scratch built all of the series drays and buckboards. And they're a combination of styrene and phosphor bronze wire. The wheels are, I've made 24 of the two person series, just a couple of the four person series and a dozen buckboards. So I'm, one person told me I was nuts. So, <laughs> anyway, next. <laughs> Here's a detail showing the um, windmill on the other module, which I did. It was, um, I had two of them, one out of wood um, frame and the other out of a metal frame. Doug Harding, who was one of the presenters at um, this last week's convention had sent me drawings on how to do a wood frame windmill. Um, you can see the surreys and buckboards placed in there. The horses are all Berkshire Valley models. Um, they have a combination of mules and horses. The horses and mules all have the harnesses. And I'll tell you, it's very, very hard for me to paint a harness and the horse at 32nd inch scale <laughs> or eighth, the, the HO scale. So next. Just another shot of the depot with the fire engines. Those are Jordan kits. Why did I buy Jordan kits? I went to Train Fest about four years ago and found out that Jordan kits were becoming a hot item. I saw these three fire engines at one vendor, and um, they he was selling them for about five bucks each. 
I went to another booth and I saw a Jordan kit being sold for $25. I turned around immediately went back and bought the fire engines. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a reason I had so many. It's insider trading. Yeah. <laughs> Next. I think this, the flat car looks pretty good. I do too. Yeah. Is it? Tyco flat car. That's the Tyco, yeah. Well, I haven't figured out one of my challenges. I've never done decaling. And sometime I've got to go to a clinic or find out how to do decaling because it scares the heck out of me. <laughs> now, I found out these fire engines for real were made somewhere down in Kansas in 1911 as when they were first manufactured. Next. Um, another challenge that was interesting was the, um, as soon as I set up the module in um, St. Louis, a fellow walked up and he says, well, you're modeling Southwest Wisconsin. I said, huh, how do you know that? Hadn't laid out anything. He says, well, I went to, college in Platteville, Wisconsin, you captured the geology of Wisconsin perfectly. He says, my study in at Platteville was geology. Hmm. So I was quite, an endorsement. I was really pleased with something like that. Yeah. So the way I make that stone, the stone wall in the background, it, it is ceiling tile. Obviously it's been carved to some degree and broken and smashed. And then I paint it with uh, um, tan paint. And then I also then sprayed it with hairspray and took limestone dust. I crushed limestone to down to the dust and I applied it. So it, it is the true limestone color of Southwest Wisconsin. Next. Then for curiosity's sake, I decided on along one of the streams, I would put in a cattail um, marsh. And so I learned, figured out how to do the cattails. They are number 22 wire that I stripped a little bit off one end and a little bit more off the other end, leave the insulation on and then paint them. In the middle of the stream, you can see a curio item that never, nobody caught whatsoever. It's a muskrat house. Um, in the background, the other thing in my um, conformity I wanted to do was talk about how this conforms to Wisconsin. So I pointed out that I've been modeling trees indigenous to Southwest Wisconsin. The yellow tree there is a river birch. The two over here are black birch. Most people know them as along the side of streams. I modeled um, black oak and I, I don't know, Ron, I think we have at some point the um, weeping willow. I'll point it out when we get there. So next. So. This is just another shot up on the hillside. You can see the houses I had built. And um, I wanted those similar to the village that is up on a hillside above this valley. And something I was taught in art class is that the Japanese have a concept of what is not seen is more enticing that, than that which is seen. So I didn't want to make the houses a predominant item. And it did pe make people stop and stare and look through the trees to see the houses. So it's a concept you may want to put in your own layout. It's not make everything blatant and right in front of your eyes, hide something somewhat, and it will draw people closer and guests to look closer at your layout. Next. Um, on the other end of the model, um, I did model the hard limestone cliff, and these are those are actual limestone collected from Southwest Wisconsin. And I made sure I preserved both the mildew and the microlichens that grow on those 
stones. Um, my father was a famous lichenologist, so that's an attribute to him. Uh, you can see the weeping willow on the le left. That also was an experiment in building. It's a, the tree is built with a wood dowel, wire armatures, um, caulk added to the, smooth out the edges. And all of the fronds are made by taking five pound braided fly fishing line, dragging it through a pool of ACC, and then dragging it through a pile of um, woodland scenics, their ground foam are their ground foam, and then I grind it down to a very fine texture. I do not encourage anybody to try this. It's hundreds of fronds, and each one has to be dried and preserved independently. So, next. Before you go, I want you to note the insulators here. Done a very good job of, insulate, of making the insulators. I think you told me those were uh, uh, beads. Um, but we have a Joanne fabric store that was going out of, it's gone out of business in the last month or actually lo relocated in there, a massive sale. And I went there and just happened to see dark green beads at half price. And so it's for the insulators, I, drill the um, wood dowel or the basswood shape and put in a, what is it, 0.015 phosphor bronze wire and then th thread the beads on the top. And I pointed out to Ron yesterday when he was photographing this, the hardest part of that is that I found, I don't know what it is about fish line, but it, it would not glue to the beads. And I eventually had to stretch it from one pole to another, wrap it around the beads, and then douse it thoroughly with ACC and accelerator. And it still wouldn't hold. So it was a challenge. Contact cement. Uh, I'm not sure just plain white Elmers wouldn't work. Yeah. It just... This is my favorite scene because you look underneath the weeping willow and you can see the coaling tower and the whole depot in the background. And then on the left, you can see my experimentation in making white pine trees. And that's a combination of using a wood dowel, number 14 electrical wires unwrapped, the stranded wire unwrapped and spread and then use flocking with hair, spray it with hairspray and flocking. Next. Uh, just another scene. The actual ground is after, from the original model or module I, in the sand. I did apply two coats of um, Static grass, I did a gray brown at the bottom to represent the dead material. And then I added another layer, which was about three or four, um, what do you call it, millimeter static grass in a light green. And then I spent hours upon hours um, using Woodland Scenics field grass it comes in three or two and a half to three inch length. I cut it down to one eighth inch lengths, mix it all together, and then apply it clump after clump after clump. But it makes for a prairie scene, which was what Southwest Wisconsin was. And I'm modeling in September. So it's um, modeling a species of grass called little blue stem which turns yellow, and then in October, it turns a reddish brown. Um, next. 
this just gives an overall tone of the color. Next. So that gives an overall. Um, I'll then give you an overall. Um, there were three display modules um, in this competition or the contest. I did get the first prize for people's choice and for the judge's choice. Um, on this one, they gave me a score of 104. Um, under the basic construction as possible 40 points, they gave me 37. For detail, the, the maximum of 20 points, they gave me 10. Ron and I don't understand why this whole thing is detailed to the nth degree, but that's the judge's option. And for conformity, where I really worked hard to explain how I was modeling Southwest Wisconsin, the maximum is 25 points. They gave me to 25. For finishing lettering, the maximum of 25 points, they gave me 23 points. For scratch built, there's a maximum of 15 points. They gave me nine. This thing is 99% scratch built. So something they saw they didn't agree with. So again, that's the judge's option. And I'm quite satisfied with the score as it was. So, and next. That's just another view of the overall. So, Ron, you did quite a job of photo shopping. This. <laughs> There's one more. Um, there okay. Go. Okay. Any questions? The lighting is awesome. Did you take these outside? Um, yes, we went outside and I set up horses in my office parking lot and Ron spent a half an hour, 45 minutes photographing all of this. That's great. How did you transport it? Um, I have a Ford Edge. And first of all, the piece on the far left, you see the handle, uh, the upper handle? Mm -hmm. That's re That piece is removable. It weighs about 10 or 15 pounds because it's the um, true limestone blocks wedged into the styrofoam then the piece back here is also removable and taken off the overall width of the module is one half inch shy of the available space in the base of my ford edge <laughs> and i had to move the seats about a two inches forward to have it front to back so it does fit within my car nice and the handles have been put on for ease of transport and safety because showing up at one of these i have to request support in terms of moving the display into the thing because i would guess this weighs i don't know ron would you guess 40 to 50 pounds i thought about a thousand <laughs> I think oh. I suspect about 45 pounds. So is it two inch foam? It's two inch foam um, only on the built up portions. The rest of it is pretty much flat. Um, and then I carved out for the stream valleys. Okay. And it's half inch plywood on a one by four frame. Oh, okay. Um, when it gets inserted into the mod, the layout itself, all of the one by four framing comes off and I will have to slide it very carefully because the whole thing could break. The, part of the reason also for having this two ends um, removable is it's gonna be shoehorned into that uh, space on the layout and it'll be easier to drop them in vertically after the main piece. So, so this I have all the wiring is done underneath um, for bus wiring and for the wiring for the um, tortoise switch machines, which I use for turnout control. 
So this trip to the contest was a one and done thing, huh? This it's a one and done. It was finished just about two hours before we left for the trans for the show. And it's sitting in my office. And as soon as my son comes home to help me take it down the stairs into the basement where my layout is, that's it. It will well, that's the, that's that's the problem with the judges. They knew you worked on it two hours before you left. They probably they did. Like the glue was probably still wet. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. So, but I'm very Ron, pleased with the result. Ron? Ron? Yeah. Am I, am I on? Yeah, you we can on. hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we, we can. can. Oh, good, good, good. I, I was muted. In 1954, I drove through Groucher on my way to Beloit to take my first job at Fairbanks Morris out of college. And I saw this coaling tower and became very enamored with it because it's only a 50 tonner. I came back and photographed it, made drawings and had intended to scratch build it. Instead, I sent it off to, um, Mullet River, I believe it is. And that coaling tower is now a uh, kit. Lloyd, I guess I could have saved myself a lot of time. And energy. <laughs> no, no, well, that. That, that wasn't the purpose of me saying that. He did a no. <laughs> fantastic job. That, well, thank you. But I just anyone else that's listening that is now a laser cut kit beautiful well, the drawing i had was for the, the for the chicago milwaukee and st paul coal, 50 ton coaling tower said it was for montana well there's almost uh, an exact dupe was an exact duplicate in wausau oh Okay. For those who don't know, Wausau is about, what, 100 miles north of Madison? Something like that. Rod, is the bottom part of the water tower concrete, or is that just wood? It looked from the photographs like it was wood. Okay. It looked like it was a board and batten kind of thing, but I I'll have to admit, I just guessed based on the photograph as to the spacing I wanted to mimic as close as I could to the photograph. I'll slip back. You guessed correctly. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oh, I can see the lines now. First time I saw it, it looked like Ford concrete. So, yeah. I didn't do a very good job of staining that. And I believe, yeah, one comment that, that was when you're judging, you're not allowed to make any negative comments about the model itself. You're only allowed to praise it or make suggestions on how you would improve it yourself. If you look at the base of the water tower, they said it would look better if I'd closed off the ground between in that one half inch section between the ground and that bottom of the water tower uh, it's so it's a way of saying you didn't perform but is this the area you're talking about yes you're not allowed to make negative comments but that is a way of saying a positive comment about a negative comment <laughs> right. beautiful like piece of work the photos just never always find those things don't they well, I I had built up the sand around it, but I hadn't glued it, and so when it got lifted and tipped, <laughs> guess what? Yeah. So. Anything else? Beautiful yeah. work. Yeah, it's just well, thank a wonderful you. Model. Yeah, I've got I've got one observation, and this is. 
an amazing piece of work, but I always see something in pictures. And if you were to look at the picture that featured the three pieces of uh, limestone, if you look at the uh, growth, the lichen or whatever it is on the lower stone, if you kind of sit back, not, not that one, let's see. I think it's, in the, there you go. Take a look at the lower, whoop, you, were, you, were, you passed it, go back. Nope. Where I'm going here. There you are. That's <laughs> well, let me just give you my observation. You can look at it later. There would appear in the lichen to be the image of a coyote. Or a <laughs> and that's okay. I mean, you know, a little bit of humor that's very subtle. Those are the things that a lot of people enjoy if they see them. <laughs> well, if it's there, well, I'll have to confess it's not by intent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. It, no, I mean, if it was natural, as you, I think I understood you say that you preserved it, uh, that that makes it even better as, a, as an observation. Yeah. Now that you mention it, I see it. Where? The lower stone, right it's in running the Running to the left. Go to the right, go to picture right yeah. down. No, no, no. Oh, there's another image there too, but I'm sorry, I can't do the. Is it this stone? I'll go right. No. You're going too high. I want to go over down one. There you are. Right there. There it is. Yep, you got it. I see it. Is that the ears? <laughs> I got yeah. you. Yeah, he's 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 uh, heading west, he's, I guess. He's, he's running west. left. Right. Okay. <laughs> I see it. That might just be in the angle of that photograph, and you might never see it again when you see the real thing. Yeah. It could be the lighting. You, yeah, I. But you can see it in the in the picture, and that's that's what I like. Concerned. <laughs> Very good. Well, Lloyd, uh, well, Rod, congratulations on your awards and a beautiful model. And Thank thanks, for, thanks uh, to both you and Ron for preparing the presentation this evening. That was wonderful. Uh, next week, I think, uh, I think Lloyd, you're going to be ready to present on the uh, on the steam cars. Yes. And so uh, we'll look forward to that. And then perhaps Rod, you're going to present on judging, maybe the week after that. Sounds fine. I'll try and prepare. Okay, wonderful. Right. Uh, It'll be dependent upon a bit able to preserve that. Um, Bob, do you know if it's possible to save? Somebody did photograph every one of the contested models mm. and it's been published. Greg or Bob, do you know how to preserve that so I could comment? Um, I know for Indy Junction, Jim Osborne took all the pictures and um, we can track that down. Um, for St. Louis, I'm not sure. There should have been somebody taking all the pictures, but it was um, published two days ago on the web. Somebody sent it yeah. out. And, I and think I saw, I I saw a link for that. It. Yeah, well, they didn't copy me. <laughs> uh, Ron, I think you might have sent that out, didn't you? I did. Yes, Ron. Yeah, so I I'll, I'll be able to go just get Just to that. see if this works. Okay. okay. Yeah. I we'll have no computer that. capability to know how to download something that's an attachment like that. Yeah, I can help you there, for sure. Bob, since you were present, I would also ask that if you're going to be there on this in two weeks, you add commentary to what you saw in terms of the contest. And Actually, I can't. You can't? I, I was, 
I didn't get there till uh, late on Wednesday, and I spent all Thursday in um, NMRA bureaucracy meetings. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I'm an election judge in Wisconsin, and we had a primary the Tuesday of the middle of the thing. So <laughs> I, uh, I was up till, you know, pretty late counting judges, or we counting votes and closing polling places, and then got up Wednesday morning, and I think I know where I-55 is, and got in the car and headed south. <laughs> well, um, I guess so, I'd, rather, I'd rather judge a um, railroad thing than judge a, <laughs> an election. Primary, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a form of community service. It, it uh, Up here in Wisconsin, it's, you know, you're working with your neighbors and friends and stuff, because it's all locally run, so it's Good. uh fairly satisfying i've been doing it for about 25 years but it there is a couple of days of the year where you are committed you've got to be there yeah well rod, thank you for serving us <laughs> rod is this what you're talking about that you want me to put up we can't see it oh you can't see it rod i can't see anything i'm seeing gratchet wisconsin your title slide i thought i got rid of that well, I'm seeing something that none of you are. Mm -hmm. I want to, if you you're got no Mr. Longer, can you see no that? Longer, no, you're no longer sharing. I think you were only sharing that one application. So when you closed it, it stopped sharing. So if you try well, to share it again, you ought to be able to do it. Let's give it a quick try here and before yeah. we quit. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Share screen. That's the one I want to share. Okay. How about that? Yep. Perfect. Okay. That's what you're looking for, isn't it, Rod? Yes, exactly. Good. Then we can do it. If it's still there, we can do it. I'll get rid of that. <laughs> hey, Rod, have you ever heard of a book uh, called Railroads of Southern and Southwestern Wisconsin by Daniel J. Lands? Yes, I have a copy of it. It's kind of my Bible. <laughs> Good. I, I, I have one, too, and I was hoping you had your own. It's a nice book. Oh, it's fantastic. Considering it was done by a teenager, I just, you're awestruck by the extensive research that he did in documenting that there's also a book smoke and cinders or something like that on the railroads of wisconsin which is a very very good reference i haven't heard of that one I, i've got one more someplace i'll, I'll look it up later for yeah. those who are not familiar railroads in wisconsin were very controversial at one point um, it was the Chicago Northwestern as they were carving their section through the state. They ended up bribing every one of the senators and representatives in the state. And there was one person who reported them and every one of them went to jail except one person <laughs> for bribery. It's sounds, sounds like things haven't changed much. <laughs> I don't know about what's going on, but yeah. sounds like an article for Northwestern Lines. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thanks, Rod. Thanks, Ron. Great job tonight. And uh, congratulations again on your awards. Very thanks, good. everybody, for attending. Like I said, Loyal will be on next week. And I've actually seen that presentation and helped, uh, helped a little bit put it together. And uh, it'll be a really good one. So you don't want to miss next week. And uh, that'll be Tuesday at 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern, just like tonight. So we'll hope to see you there. Have a good night. All right. Good see night. you all later. Good night. Good night.